everyone. Um, as Anna just mentioned, my name is Tatiana Tretiak. Um, I'm a product manager at Booking.com. And um, I've been with Booking for about three years, and uh, we're based in uh, Amsterdam, where I flew over from, from there, and it's my first time in Dublin, so I'm very excited. But before we dive into the topic of um, culture and the cultural shifts you need to do experimentation, I want to share um, a story or a fact you don't know about me is that I grew up in a really small town in Russia, and I actually moved to Amsterdam just for the job. When I say small town, it's like 15,000 people small town. If you think size of Russia, there's like a little, little drop of population. And um, as in every small town, like people had very normal expectations of what normal is. Like you go to school, you go to work, maybe go to university, and it's all kind of planned out for you. But I always wanted to try new things, try different things, and I'm not talking about like crazy hairstyles we all went through as teenagers. It's more like learning Photoshop at 12 because I wanted to change the hairstyle of my favorite actress, or learning Spanish in a town where no one speaks Spanish for sure. And I didn't get much criticism, but the answer was always like, why did you bother Tatiana? Like, what's in it for you? And my answer was always, well, I'm curious, and if I fail, at least I'll learn something. Well, this approach of I'll try and if I fail, I'll learn something got me from my little ho hometown in Russia to a leading travel company in the world where at least we try and learn something became the motto we use every day. So around four years back, I came to Bukain, which had almost 18,000 employees, so it's bigger than my hometown, no pressure. <laughs> And there's uh, around 200 product teams working on product development every day from Amsterdam. And they all do it with the goal of making it easier for everyone to experience the world. Of course, every mission statement is meant to be ambitious and inspiring. But if you look at every single word of it, it's like, what's easier? Who's everyone? What do you even mean by experience the world? And when you are sitting in HQ in Amsterdam, it's very hard to understand what customers actually want. So we made a decision that we'll let customers drive our product. And probably, as all of you know in this room, predicting customer behavior is hard. Raise your hand if you ever predicted it right. Let's talk afterwards, because I want to know how you managed it. <laughs> Um, and since predicting customer behavior is hard, uh, the approach the company took is to rely on data and experiment on everything every day. Every single pixel, any interaction, every feature has been tested, and it gave us immense amount of data. And we've built some tools to process this data, but this talk, I don't want to focus on the tools, because technology can be bought or replicated. It, but culture is something that you need to build from the beginning. And even if you have the most amazing tools in the world, um, the wrong culture will not let you experiment at scale every single day. So I would like to share with you um, four aspects of culture and organizational processes that actually give you this feeling that, OK, it's a new day. I'm going to run a new A-B test. And I might fail, but I will learn something. The first one was actually that failure is OK. And I think it's been covered in previous talks in this room, uh, so I might not want to reiterate the message too much. But failure is different for everyone. Like Statistically speaking, only one out of 10 A-B tests is successful, which means nine are not. So if you obsess around the failures, you basically will not have a life, <laughs> because you'll only think about uh, failed A-B tests. And um, another point is that Breaking things is an actually amazing learning opportunity because you learn how to not break them again next time. Um, and what a failure actually is is another different question because um, to me and uh, my peers at Booking, failure is not a negative result. Negative result is actually a very, very good thing because you, you manage to tackle a pain point of a user which is so bad that just by touching it, you made it worse. It means that you found something where you have to dig deeper, something that requires um, more insights, more research, and you keep moving in this direction. 
The failure, or what we define as failure, is if you run an A-B test, which you spent two weeks pre preparing and then three weeks running, and then you didn't learn anything, because that's just time wasted and you didn't get any insights out of that. The second part is that experimentation is the key to agreement. Um, raise your hand if during last month you disagreed with your designer or product manager on how the feature should look like. Imagine you have five teams that can try to come to this agreement, or ten teams, or you have a CTO coming in saying, we need this tomorrow, I don't care. Well, if experimentation is something that you do frequently, experimentation becomes a part of decision-making process. And this way, there is no right or wrong opinion, there is no right or wrong idea. Every idea is worth testing. And even if you are 100% sure that this is something we want to roll out, testing and experimentation still becomes an important step in that delivery process. Because even if you were hugely successful or hugely unsuccessful, experimentation will help you measure how successful were you or unsuccessful, which happens nine times out of ten. Um, and uh, it also helps you to avoid hippos, so the highest paid people in the room, um, to push their ideas, because even if they are super confident with what they want to do, if the data proves them otherwise, it actually gives you as a PM or UX person to push back and do it right and not just do it fast. Point number three. Uh, data is king, but empathy means. I don't think it really matters on the size of your company, but the moment you start getting your hands of data, it becomes very tempting to just spend days on running analysis, running queries, ra analyzing the test uh, results. But in the end, data and experimentation is not the what. It's not the reason your company exists. It's not something that will make the difference in the end of the day. Um, experimentation is just how. It's the way you validate the hypothesis. And in order to understand the what for this how, you actually have to work a lot on the qualitative side of things. So user research, customer interviews, and um, it's sometimes a bit tricky and becomes uh, chicken and egg problem, because do you first start with research and then you run an experiment to validate the findings, or do you first run the experiment and if the findings don't make sense, you invest in research? There is no right or wrong answer, because ideally you can do both. If you, if you set up your experiments in a way that you collect as much data as possible, every experiment can lead you to the new insight and new idea of what needs to be investigated qualitatively. Uh, for example, if you run an A-B test that uh, changes the checkout process and um, you suddenly see that it performs great, people are booking, everyone's happy, but you see a drop in family bookings. So families book less holidays, which is not great because families definitely need a holiday. It gives you an idea, okay, something went wrong for families, let's talk to family bookers and understand why they're not booking, how can we improve the process for them. So experimentation can actually fire up your research, or the other way around is that if you work on something which you have no way to implement in terms of A-B test, you first, of course, do the research, and then you test it through experimentation. And um, yeah, so in my opinion, uh, data is king, but empathy is still very important. You shouldn't just run A-B tests every day because then you lose touch with your customer and you lose the ability to understand what is actually the matter you're trying to solve. And another very important point is that you have to try to create the community uh, to keep the culture strong. And that is something that applies both for startups and big corporations because it's very, it takes very long time to set up a culture, but especially in the times of rapid growth and rapid hiring, it's the first thing that uh, can be broken very easily. Um, if you're just a startup and you, uh, it's a privilege to try to set up the culture you want and then you can look at the user research and experimentation rules and how you trust data. but. As you get more successful and you get bigger, you have more and more people coming in, 
And as you get more successful, you also get more people coming in from another big companies who also have their rules of the game, and they believe that this is the right rule of the game. So it's, it's hard. Like, creating the culture is hard, maintaining it is even harder. At the very beginning, uh, when I joined, it was still possible to do one-on-one -on -one training uh, with someone who created the whole culture or talk to someone who is more experienced to ask for advice. But once you start uh, having 50 people joining every month, it becomes not scalable to teach every person individually how the experimentation works and what rules of the game are. Um, we found two solutions uh, how to solve it. One of them is uh, work with your most passionate, most loyal employees to make them ambassadors. They become the go-to people to ask these questions, and they usually do it voluntarily because they've been in the company for so long or they care about the matter for so long, you don't really need extra incentives to make them do it. And um, they want to pass the button, they want to share what they know to keep this culture and keep the standards high. Um, but it also doesn't go very far because you can have just so many experts to cover 2,000 people organization. So another approach we've, we tested and which worked is also trying to create a community uh, that does peer-to-peer -peer, uh, reviews of each other experiments. And it becomes just win-win-win for all three parties. We usually pair up someone who is more experienced in the organization with someone who is new, so people learn from each other of how the experiments should be run and how, um, what is the good practice, what is the bad practice. Uh, and since you actually review random experiment, experiments, so you literally press a shortcut and you get a random experiment running in the company, it's also an amazing way to keep to stay aware of um, what's happening in the company outside of your immediate scope. So you learn what's happening in other departments, and since you're really in a review, you also help these people to understand what can it do better in the future. And you don't need massive organization to start doing it, because once the community gets started and then grows with a similar rate as uh, your company grows, and it becomes self-sustainable. One thing to keep in mind, though, is when you start this review process, uh, it's very important to explain why this is happening, because if people just suddenly start leaving reviews on your experiments, you're like, why me? What did I do wrong? Why out of all the 100 experiments running, it's mine that got picked? So this can create a bit of animosity in the beginning and not understanding, like, why are you grading me? So set up the rules of the game uh, at the very beginning, and then uh, the community will keep the culture strong. Um, great, so I think these are four key ideas I would like to bring, and once you go back to the office uh, on Monday, well, not Monday, Wednesday, um, remember that you have to revisit your definition of failure. A negative test is not a failure. A negative test is just one step in the right direction, hopefully, or which will be a right direction up to some point. And uh, try to get buy-in, not just uh, from your team, but also from management, because we all have uh, sometimes people who just want results and don't understand why they're not happening. And uh, then it will just create the atmosphere which is more welcome into experimentation, and failure becomes part of the game. Balance uh, experimentation with uh, qualitative research. Depending on the problem you're working, uh, you can either start with research and continue with the experimentation or the other way around. Um, try to make experimentation as part of a decision making. Whatever project plan you're doing or whatever slide deck you're submitting with the roadmap, experimentation should be one of the aspects. You can never assume whatever you've built will be right from the first go. And since you start communicating this to up management, to peers, others will also start thinking this way. So whatever idea you push, always put a slot of time to experiment and test it. And um, of course, try to build community to keep the culture thriving. Even if you're at first just one person in a community, it's a good start. And then it can keep uh, growing further. Um, so. I have some links here because I know a lot of people are interested more in the technical side of things and how the infrastructure is set up. 
I'm probably not the right person to tell about it because I wasn't the one who built it. But uh, on our blog, on uh, blog.booking.com, there are plenty of articles written by my colleagues who explain this in a bit more detail. So if you're interested more in the technical side of things, that's uh, the place you should go for. And uh, we are hiring. Thank you. <laughs>